You're going to like this segment. Pay attention. More than 2.6 million kids are treated in the ER every single year for sports and recreation related injuries. And as the weather is getting warmer, these visits are on the rise. So, what is fact? What is fiction when it comes to these common injuries when it comes to our kids? Dr. Teo Mendez is an orthopedic surgeon with New York Orthopedics, and he joins us now to break it all down. Thanks for being here. Good to see you again. Thank you. So, we're seeing injuries on the rise right now because people are playing sports. More people are playing sports right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, sports injuries in kids are one of the highest growing segments of injuries uh, at all. So we see them in the summer. We see kids playing sports all year round. And so the injuries are, are rising. Okay, let's go through fact or fiction when it comes to sports injuries. The first one, falling from the monkey bars likely means that your kid has a concussion. Fact or fiction? So it's, that's false. It's fiction. And here's why. So concussions make up about 10% of ER visits. You know, obviously the most common things being bruises, sprains, and broken bones. The problem is that concussions are they're subtle. The signs are subtle. So the kid's not going to be screaming like they would if they have a bruise or a broken bone. The things to look for, obviously, loss of consciousness is a telltale sign. But other things, like continuing to have a headache, saying that they have photophobia or sensitivity to light, these are the things to look for if they may have a concussion. What they, do you do if you think your child was so they, just concussed? Yeah, you need to take them to seek medical attention. But there's nothing you can, I mean, you shouldn't do a hot compress or anything no, no, like no, no, that? No, no, no. They should okay. seek medical attention. Okay, the next one is being unable to bear weight is usually a sign of an ankle fracture. Fact or fiction? So it's unable to bear weight is true that you need to see a doctor. It's not a sign of an ankle fracture, but it is true that you need to seek medical attention. So the things that we look for after an ankle fracture, there's a set of rules called the Ottawa Ankle Rules. If you go to an ER and you're unable to bear weight and you have tenderness on the bones, it's a sign you need an x-ray. I would point out that the difference between a break and a fracture, they're actually the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's really no difference. Um, but some sprains are actually worse than breaks. So you may need more treatment, more physical therapy, potentially more surgery than a simple break. Fracture or breaks, obviously a broken bone. Broken what bone. is a sprain? So a sprain is the ligament. So it's, you actually don't break the bones, but you injure or stretch out the ligaments. In, around the ankle. Okay, next one. Break out the heating pad for sports injuries. Fact or fiction? So I, you get this question all the time. Um, we have to really understand what heat or cold does. So cold cryotherapy, what it does is it decreases the circulation around a joint, decreases your swelling, and it also numbs pain. Heat does the opposite. So it increases the circulation to an area, and it can actually increase swelling. After an acute injury that's 24 to 48 hours, you know, we advise to put cold on, on the area. What happens when you, when you uh, pull a muscle, you get an initial injury to, from the pulled muscle, but then you get this secondary injury cascade. Cold therapy or cryotherapy early after an injury can actually blunt that secondary injury. So, so we want cold after an injury. There's one caveat to this, and that's with a back sprain or back strain. So the back muscles, actually, what they can do is they can go into spasm to sort of protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's been shown that heat is actually better than cold initially after a back injury. Interesting. So if it's on the back, use the heat. If it's anywhere else, use the yeah, cold. Yeah, correct. Okay, great. This one is shocking. If your kids like to swim, listen to this, Mom and Dad. Drowning can happen hours after your child has left the pool. That's fact or fiction? So this is actually true, and it's, it's amazing. I can't believe that. How, how in the world can your child so, drown you know, after they leave the pool? The good news is that this, this, this is very rare, but what can happen after you drown, after you take water into your lungs, your larynx or voice box goes into a laryngospasm to try to shut off to keep any more water from coming in. So a kid can actually leave the pool and still be in a laryngospasm, unable to get air into their lungs. Now that usually, you, you were telling me during the break, so I was questioning you about this, I thought that can't happen, but you were saying it usually coincides with an injury. It usually coincides with an initial incident of aspirating the water, but it, you know, the, and the problem is this, they're very subtle, so the kid will be unable to breathe, hoarse, or just feeling lethargic. But it's, you know, if, if a kid has any incident in the water, they should definitely be What do you observed. do as a parent, then, if you get you, home and your child is drowning without the water? Well, you observe them and you take them to the hospital. So scary. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mendez. Great to see you. My Good pleasure. job.